Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome, welcome to our worship service this morning at First Presbyterian Church of Coppers Cove. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is good to see all of you here today on this uh, last Sunday in July, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. We are uh, doing what we do best together. Those of you here that are in person, those that we are welcoming that are participating online, we are doing what we do well together, and that is to worship the Lord our God. We have had a busy week this week. We started actually, I guess, a week ago Saturday with our children at the table class, and then last Wednesday we had an extremely successful delightful animal and kids day which we're considering renaming to be uh, kids with lizard day or maybe maybe um, Josephine with lizard day uh, we had uh, one particular uh, student that just enjoyed the lizards very much they they were wonderful I mean these it, it was spectacular and we also had a kikaju and we had a parrot and a rottweiler and snakes and oh my a lot of excited children learning a lot about caring for god's creatures so we had a great time and i thank all of you who shared your children with us and we thank the presenters uh, from the bottom of our hearts it was wonderful this week we are getting ready and anticipating a whole month of more activities um, the summer is not a not a uh, a quiet time for the church. We do a lot of our uh, educational programming and a lot of our mission work in the summer. And we are getting ready for August is Mission Month. And in a moment, I will call forward our mission and outreach elder to go over particularly what is coming up um, most near August 7th and August 14th activities. Um, we also will be having the blessing of the backpacks on August the 14th. I think I had last week, I had um, typed in the 21st, and I was thinking that was when the, church, the schools were starting, but I've been informed that it's earlier. Um, so we are going to be doing our backpack blessing on the 14th. So everyone who is going to school, and that includes 
teachers and uh, college students, anyone who is headed back to education, you're welcome to bring your backpack that day and we will be uh, saying a prayer for your upcoming year. Uh, we also have a lot of fun doing it. So remember to bring your backpack that day and be excited for the upcoming year. I would like to um, bring your attention to uh, the session's response um, to our increasing COVID uh, frequency in their incidents in the area um, and make sure you're aware of the things that the session is suggesting um, and uh, uh, ask you to um, take note of them. Um, and that, with that, I think what I'll do is I'll call Marion Harrison forward and let her stand from this mic if she would. And she is wearing a deep in the heart of Texas blood donation t-shirt. She's famous for her t-shirts. There she is. So Marion Harrison, talk to us. <laughs> Actually, next Sunday is Feed My Sheep, uh, the soup kitchen. We're gonna make sandwiches. And I had a shirt for that too, but I just couldn't wear two shirts. So I had to decide <laughs> which one I was gonna wear. It was tough because both Things that we're going to do for Mission Month are very important. We'll start with August the 7th, which is next Sunday, and at 9.30 we will start making our sandwiches. Yes, there's a lot of you that have already been doing this before. We've been known to do the first Sunday in August for years for making sandwiches. And so just come at 9.30 and bring a loaf of bread if it's just one person. If it's a family, bring two loaves of bread and Mission and Outreach will provide the uh, peanut butter and jelly and the turkey and the ham and the cheese. And we're gonna get them all packed up and the confirmands, ones that are studying to get to be, gonna get their confirmation, they're going to take with Pastor Naomi, they're gonna take the sandwiches over to feed my, tem uh, feed my sheep soup kitchen in Temple that afternoon. So we're really looking forward to it and we're thinking about making, we're probably going to be making about 400 sandwiches. So be prepared, we'll have our gloves and we'll have all those things and it's going to be a fun time and just think we're, we're helping some people that really need it. They need <coughs> food, food's so important, especially if you don't have it. But um, anyway, or it just helps them subsidize maybe what food they do have. All right, moving right along to giving blood. That's gonna be August the 14th. And you know, giving blood is a biblical and a community responsibility. I just wanna give you a little background about blood. Every two seconds in the United States, someone needs blood. About one in seven entering a hospital will need blood. These donations are used for accident victims as well as cancer, organ transplants, and surgery patients. People with chronic illnesses need blood. Do you know that blood is the one thing that can't be manufactured by man? I thought, you know, think about it. Why give a pint of blood? Okay, I'm going to give you some reasons maybe you hadn't thought of. You help others. Your donated blood can save up to three lives, according to the American Red Cross. Number two, you will get a free health checkup for doing something good. The nurse will check your blood pressure, your pulse, your temperature, the hemoglobin, etc. Three, I like this one. Hey, it burns calories. You burn about 60, 650 calories when you give a pint of blood. Okay, number four, you're getting a tune-up. When, when you donate blood, you generate new blood. Number five, it promotes well-being. Yours, that is. It makes you feel good about yourself. It even reduces stress and improves your emotional health. Six, it doesn't really hurt. The minor discomfort is well worth it. And the actual donation itself only takes 10 minutes. And I'm just kind of curious. I know some of you have given blood in the past, may not be able to give blood now. But anyway, how many people have already given blood before and they're still here? 
How many people have given blood? Hey, look, there's quite a few people I see have given blood. Great. Actually, the first time I gave blood, I had to give blood to my son. He was an infant and he needed blood. And after that, you know, I've given blood several times. <laughs> And also, the last thing is you may need a blood donation one day yourself. Just think about that. You may need that. But last, we have to tell you about this. There's some incentives. You know what incentives are? Well, prizes. Everyone who donates a beach, everybody who donates blood gets a beach towel. Wow. But the next thing that's pretty amazing Carter Blood Bank is the one that is, is doing this. And they're having this promotion that anybody that gives blood in August, anybody that gives blood in August, that, and they're, they're going to draw four names. They're gonna draw four names each day or each time. I don't know how they're gonna work it, but four days, uh, four people will be drawn each day. And if you win, you get a $500 Visa card to pay your bills. Now that's pretty amazing. Just think, I figured it out. I have a better chance with this than I did winning that money last night that the person in Illinois won, that won that big money last night. So I, you know, I have signed up. But um, you can go to the carterbloodcare.org in lower case for more information or you can contact me. And I just wanted to tell you that when you go look, it'll tell you whether you're eligible or not. But I want to, just in case you don't check, I just want to tell you that diabetes and some cancers are not excluded in donation eligibility. That's pretty important. So um, in the announcement, there is a link where you can go sign up uh, for a time. And there's a QR code on the posters, and you can sign up there. And if you don't have a computer or a smartphone, just sign up on the list and I will get in contact with you. I know some of you all have talked to and some of you I know can't give but wish you could. But if you can give, please sign up if possible by August the 7th. Uh, there, we've got 28 slots, so if you've got friends that are interested, uh, they could go ahead and sign in if they had the link and they don't necessarily have to come in the church. The bus is gonna be parked out there. And uh, anyone that's 17 years old, weighs at least 110 pounds, and has good health is eligible. And a 16 year old can donate with a parental scent. And I wanna tell you that those who have already signed up, which I found out, two people have already, three or four people have already signed up. So I wanna say thank you in advance. But also I want to tell you that I know everybody is not going to be, or, or we've got the young kids, they can't donate blood. So, but we are going to have an activity for the uh, children and adults back there at 945. Uh, well, if you come before, I'll be here, well, I'll be giving blood probably at nine, but there, we'll be back there. You, we're going to start at 945 with the cards. All right. We've got some really nice cards that the B.J. Taylor made that we're going to give to the Hill Country Rehab residents. And some of these people never get anything. Nobody ever sends them anything. So we can write little messages. And then I thought, we're going to find some coloring pages. So you guys can color pages if you can't write down on the cards because they're going to put those little coloring pages up in their room on the wall. And they'll be so happy and they'll see it and they'll make it, them happy. So just remember, next week, come for the sandwiches, one, one loaf of bread or two loaves of bread to come back here. We're going to have other loaves. We're going to have more loaves of bread, too. And uh, please do that. And uh, please sign up. Or if you have any questions about this blood drive anyway <laughs> whatsoever, please call me. Uh, my, I ha there's a directories in the hallway. Uh, some of you already know my number, but I'll be glad to answer any questions. And I'm just so pleased and honored that uh, First Presbyterian has decided to do all of this. Thank you, Marianne. It sounds like it's going to be a great mission month. Um, I would like now to have you uh, center your hearts and minds 
and let us prepare to worship the Lord our God. And we welcome Grace Hoy that will be our, our worship song leader today. And we will sing Behold What Manner of Love. And we will be singing this twice. <laughs> Please join the call to worship. We are children of God learning to walk. Day by day, we are learning to be in church. God is a loving parent teaching us to walk. God loves us, leads us, and feeds us. Let us worship the Lord, our God. join in praise of God because this is the fifth Sunday of the month hymn sing so we're going to begin and we already did blessed assurance and we're, I will tell you if you, it's in your bulletin but I'll be glad to tell you how we're going to do this because next we're going to, to sing for the beauty of the earth and we're going to sing two verses the story. One verse.
And now, from page 826, 26, if you're in your hymnal, we're going to sing Lift High the Cross, one verse. from my Baptist days. What a friend we have in Jesus. One verse. We're going to sing one verse of My Soul Cries Out with a Joyful Shout. page 691 in the hymnal, Lord, when I came into the light. All the verses.
Let us return to our God in confession, considering God's steadfast love. Loving God, when life is confusing and faith is hard, when our longing prayer is why, you are there. We confess that we haven't always heard you crying alongside us. We confess to believing that we are all alone. Open our eyes to see the light that you bring. Work your goodness and graciousness in us. Grow in us the faith we need to see the light of Christ always shining with us. Amen. In confession, we turn back to God, whose spirit is truly with us forever. Truly Christ's grace, mercy, and love, we are deeply and truly forgiven. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Boys and girls, I, um, I have a dilemma this morning for you. I have a, do you know what a dilemma is? Sort of something I can't quite figure out. So if all the boys and girls want to come on forward, maybe you can help me. You can, you can just say seated in your front pew there, but I was calling the others. If they want to come on forward and they can sit and scoot in a little bit. There you go. You find a spot to sit, Baron. There's a spot right there. Okay, all right. I have got over here a whole lot of canned goods that I have come into, and I'm trying to figure out how to get them home to where, where Mike and I can, can have them. And there's a lot of them. And I was thinking I, would, I found this sack. I thought I'd put them in here and see, see if I can get them home. What do you think? I think I'm going to do very good with this. What do you think? Sort of feels like it might be getting a little too full. Not real sure. Oh, it broke. That's a problem, isn't it? Let me try a bigger sack. Let me put them up here and try again. All right, I sort of was suspicious that might happen. Let me try a slightly bigger sack. Let's see if this one works. Hmm, gosh. It's a little bit bigger. Let me keep going. It's sort of heavy. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work or not. What do you think? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. It's just. Uh, what? Well, you know. Oh, yeah, there's a can behind me, even. Oh, yep. I'm just. They're all over the place. This is just really hard. Let me see if I can use this really big grocery sack. This should maybe do it. Oh my goodness. Let's see if I can get them all in here. There are just so many cans. I don't know, there's 
Oh my goodness, I think I can get them all in here. Now, oh, I can't even lift this one. What's my problem? I got a dilemma. Yeah, do you think maybe I got too many cams? Do you think that I need to start thinking about whether I need this many? Maybe I really don't need some of these. Maybe, you know what? We already have some of this stuff. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should share some of this with someone else and I wouldn't have to be taking so much of it home. I could give it to people right here in Copper's Cove that need it. Do you think that might be something that I could solve my problem? You think so, Jacqueline? Look at that. Now it's a whole lot lighter because I'm sharing. In fact, I might even, I might, I don't even know that Mike need any, Mike and I need any of this. I might share all of it because I really don't think we really need any of it. Do you know what? That's what God wants us to do. God wants to us to realize that we have so much. You know, God has given us what we need and wants us to be happy, but he wants us to realize when we have too much, and he wants us to realize that it, it really isn't ours to begin with. It belongs to God, and we need to be sharing it with other people that don't have any. You think that's a good answer to my dilemma? You think so? Yeah, I think so too. Let's have a prayer. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for all the many, many blessings that you have given us. We ask you to help us remember that all good gifts come from you and that we, in honoring you, can share with others. We say this prayer in the name of Jesus, the greatest gift of all. In his name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, those of you who were here on the children at the table time, make sure you take your placemat that you made. They're back on the table in the back. So before you leave for home today, make sure you get that. But you are dismissed. Thank you for listening. the gospel proclaimed, open our ears to hear your word, open our eyes to see your truth, and open our hearts to receive your grace. Amen. Please listen to the first reading from Psalms 107. Give thanks to, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hands of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in the desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Let the one who is wise heed these things and ponder the loving deeds of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Laura Bell. 
I, I hope you're aware that the liturgists who are doing such a fine job today are part of our confirmation class, and we just think they're doing a wonderful job learning how to serve the church from within. It's Daryl and Laura Bell Eno. And we will also have some others that will be helping with the offering. Josephine uh, Thielbar and Damian Hassler and also Daryl Eno. So we thank you. Thank you very much. The second reading today comes from Luke 12. We will be reading the 13th chapter from the, I mean, the 12th chapter, verses 13 to 21. Listen now for God's word to you. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then the landowner said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat and drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life is demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Wondrous God, uphold me now as we uplift you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Jesuit priest John Howey once said, we read the gospel as if we had no money and we spend our money as if we know nothing of the gospel. It is a very appropriate statement for Christians like us to consider because we know we are subject to the pressures of living in a very materialistic culture, but also because we, we are a subject right now, and I don't think I probably need to tell any of you, to financially a very unstable and concerning time, a time where despite low unemployment rates, Costs are rising, rising, the market has plummeted, and recession is threatening. So we struggle between doing what we know we should do from the gospel and succumbing to the pressures and fears of our time and place. The statement by priest John Howey just, just so happens to also be a, a pretty good one to begin our study from Luke today, a text that speaks to how faithful people should handle their money and possessions. We read the gospel as if we had no money, and we spend our money as if we know nothing of the gospel. I do believe there might be one more slide. Let's see if there is. Yes, and it's pretty small. Not sure you can see any of that at all. Maybe you can. It's just the outline of the sermon. Luke is certainly not the only place that the importance of how faithful people need handle money and possessions is addressed. God, God speaks of this subject throughout the entirety of the Bible. It is such an important and frequently discussed subject that it has been given a, a name. It's, it's called the odd economics of God the odd economics of God, something that the man who interrupted Jesus should, should have known, and that is if he was a good Jew and if he studied his scripture. Nevertheless, he interrupted and he said, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. And Jesus responded. 
He responded by first providing the punchline of the lesson to which he was about to teach. Pay attention, he said. Guard yourself against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Then Jesus told a parable. A parable about a landowner who, who did not actually seem to be that bad of a man. Jesus gave no hint anyway that he who, who did not have enough room in his current barns to store his prolific harvest had done anything illegal. He'd not acquired his wealth illicitly, nor had he exploited any of his hired hands. The only thing was, the only thing that is said here is that his land produced abundantly. His land had produced abundantly. And the landowner was struggling, struggling with how to store the excess. Some in the crowd may have actually been thinking as Jesus spoke, God has surely blessed this man. He must be very devout. But as Jesus went on, we can start to see the hint of trouble present itself. The man starts talking to himself, asking himself question after question and answering them too. It sounds a little funny at first, some of us can identify. However, when we realize that he's not doing this, mm, that he's doing this because he doesn't have anyone else to speak to, it, it becomes a little sad instead of funny. The landowner is living his life in great isolation. Reverend Shannon Kirchner and other scholars suggest that the landowner had so completely ingested his culture's dominant narrative of acquisition at all costs that he had, he had no one else, and he had nothing else but this. His primary purpose, to get more and more and more, to build more barns when he had come into surprising abundance, had become such a focus that he had become the center of his own world. Indeed, it is true that when one is constantly, constantly focused on buying and buying and buying and selling and selling and selling and then buying and buying and buying, at some point you no longer know how to have a relationship with anything else but your product. Your hands become clenched so tightly that they no longer know how to open up. There is an old story that I've told some of you before about a, a hunter who once observed an eagle landing on an ice-crusted limb floating in a river. From that vantage point, the bird could undoubtedly un observe all the best fish. But the river was rushing towards a waterfall. At any moment, the eagle could have turned loose of the icy perch and soared away into the blue sky, but it did not. It did not. It stayed on its perch so as to not miss out on any of those great fish. Eventually, it remained too long so that its talons froze on the limb and it could not then let go. Sadly, it seems that at first the eagle had the limb, but then the limb had the eagle. Yes, perhaps the landowner's fist had become too tightly closed. He had neither other humans nor God in conversation with him. Note how often he uses the word my or I. I think it's 11 times in three verses. My crops, my barns, my grain, my goods. I will do this. I will pull down. I will build. I will store. No one else was on his radar. No one for whom he was responsible. No one who could benefit from the blessing of his abundant crop. The land was his. The barn was his. The grain was his. The goods were his. He had no neighbor and no need 
for God. His life was all about himself. In addition, he had bought into his culture's lie that we are what we own. He'd done what Jesus warned against. He'd let his life consist in an abundance of possessions. And he'd forgotten about God's command in the Hebrew law to which, to which he needed to be trained, and that was to watch over the widow and the orphan and the stranger in the land, to leave the borders of one's fields unharvested so that the poor could glean from them, to simply share one's abundance with those who do not have enough and cannot make ends meet, to simply share to simply share. It's a command. And there's no room for hedging. There's no wiggling. And there's no privileged maneuvering. You know, in our very materialistic culture, and during, like I said, this financially unstable time, we too risk believing that lie, that we are what we own. There was a song in a musical called Rent in 1996, a musical by Jonathan Larson, which you might know. It addresses this so well. Rent was about some very socially unconventional people, bohemians, living in the East Village in New York City. They were a mixed bag of junkies and cynical individualists and revolutionary artists. They, however, were also people who had the great ability to see and then sarcastically expose the sin of the world in which they lived. The song describes this lie which has been called the number one enemy of the soul. The lyrics are these. Don't breathe too deep. Don't think all day. Dive into work, drive the other way. The drip of hurt, the pint of shame, it goes away. Just play the game. You're living in America. At the end of the millennium, you're living in America. Leave your conscious conscience at the tone. And when you're living in America, at the end of the millennium, you are what you own. You are what you own. Yes, in our culture and in this time, it's easy, it's very easy for us to succumb to that lie, that we are what we own. In addition, we can quickly, like the landowner, lose sight of God's command to care for the less fortunate. We forget that all we have comes from God and belongs to God, and it is merely on loan for us to begin with. We forget that being rich towards God, honoring our giver of all good gifts, is done through our sharing of the blessings that we have received. Several years ago, a survey was published in the USA Today that indicated that on average, people with incomes below $10,000 gave to charity three times proportionately more than people with incomes 50 to 100,000. And people with incomes between 10 and 50,000 gave almost twice as much proportionally as people in the 100 to $2,000 category, $200,000 category. While there are exceptions, certainly the reason for this is because we are not, we are not so unlike eagles on ice-crusted limbs. The landowner became frozen on his limb and his life was racing towards the end without him having secured the treasure that Jesus calls eternal without him having lived a life rich towards God and leaving the world a better place by sharing his possessions. Everything he had was going to end up rotting and wasting away, and God called this man of the parable a fool. 
And sadly, it was an eternal fool that God called him. Friends, while Jesus told the parable in order to help that man who was asking the question about his inheritance, he also provided the lesson for us as well. It is especially meaningful for you and I in, in our time and our place when it is tempting to start complaining or to panic because, because our stuff or our economic futures are being seemingly threatened. It is a lesson for us here and now when we are likely to worship the idols of fear and scarcity, to start in with the mys and the eyes ourselves, and when we, when it, and it is easy to give into the culture's lie that we are what we own. It is a lesson for us now, for it is now when pressures are great that we may forget that our abundance is a gift from God, on loan from God, and our lives need to publicly embody our gratitude by sharing with God's people. So, Let's go from here today with great intent, with great intent to not be as the foolish landowner. Let us let our hearts and our minds get beyond the borders of our fields and our bank accounts and our investments and our 401ks and let us grasp that vision for the truly new and the abundant life lived with God forever. Let us answer Father Howey's statement instead with our own. We read the gospel knowing we have been blessed with money and we spend our money as if we know the gospel. Amen. Let us now as we prepare for the offering, let us sing the response to the word Lord, prepare me. we do have one thing we'd like to do and that is to have a grateful sending and a, a well a, a parting word for um, one of our very valuable employees Karina Velasquez. Karina can you come on forward please? Karina is heading off to college um, and she has served this church well for oh, the last I don't know eight months nine months and we are sorry to see her go, but we are also very, very excited for her future. Karina, come on, stand up here. We have a little bit of a parting gift for you. This is from the congregation for you to take with you. <laughs> and we also have this for you. It's called the Bible Promise Book, and hopefully this will help you during your time in college. Um, and help you remain close to God and following the scriptures in your daily living. I would like to say a blessing to Karina, but may we first all thank her for her job and give a clap offering to God. Uh, let us pray. Karina, may the road rise to meet you, and may the wind always be on your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, and may the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. There you go. Friend, let us now worship God with our morning offering.
comes from you, O God. If we were to give thanks until the end of time, we could not repay your benevolence and grace. Take these, our meager offerings, we pray, and may everything we say and do show forth your irrepressible love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Friends, let us now stand and sing our closing. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot the pastoral prayer. How about that? <laughs> I'm just eager to get back to the donuts. There's donuts waiting. <laughs> let, us, let us come before God for the pastoral prayer. God of heaven and earth, in your wisdom, you made the whole creation and you called it good. You have lavished your creatures with beauty and sustained us with your grace. Even so, we are distracted and seduced and wreak havoc on your world you have made. Humbly then, we pray to you for comfort and healing and peace, saying, gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are fighting wars that have come upon them. We pray for those who suffer from them. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for your church, that we may overcome divisions and live in the unity given to us in Christ. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for here, our First Presbyterian Church of Coppers Cove, and also for the First United Methodist Church of Pierce, Colorado this day. May the Pierce congregation feel your spirit in their midst. May its people be lifted up as they are held in the hearts of us, their brothers and sisters in the faith. May this church's ministries be blessed, and may you touch many new souls through their work, the work of its, their members that is being done in your name. We pray for your creation, Lord, that the earth's wounds may be healed and we may become better caretakers. We pray for legislators who currently discuss the regulations which may be best put into place to help our planet heal and combat climate change. We ask your healing presence with all those suffering from the extreme heat, from wildfires, 
and from horrible floods. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for those who fight despair and struggle with addiction or live without hope. We pray for those who grieve today, especially for family and friends of Van Vanderlyn, a life well lived in your service. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who are ill and those who care for them. We particularly lift to you, that you today, those that are near and dear to us, and we offer their names up to you in the silence. We pray for the secret burdens of our hearts. We pray for all of those who celebrate special days this week, anniversaries and birthdays and successes and vacations. We particularly lift to you today Jeff Greentree and Paolo Canto. Jeff to have a wonderful celebration of his birthday and Paola for her time at John Knox Ranch. May she grow in her walk with you, dear Lord, and may Jeff feel your tender spirit around him. Grateful for your mercy, we entrust these and all prayers to you through our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, lead, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us stand and sing the hymn of the church, Though I May Speak, number 693. <laughs> go in peace and go in joy. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the, hope and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Alleluia. Amen.